Leadership presents The Campfire, and today we are talking District 35A, Division 2. The teams in this district include Argyle, Creekview, Denton, Emerson, Independence, Memorial, and Lake Dallas. Let's analyze these teams in our film session. Argyle was already considered a powerhouse in Texas high school football, but their performance in their first year of 5A was something to admire. The Eagles went undefeated throughout the regular season and made it all the way to the state semifinal before losing to eventual champion South Oak Cliff. Argyle used a dynamic ground attack, but the bulk of their running game plus some huge defensive pieces have graduated. Look for Todd Rogers to still pound the ball as the Eagles do return some first team all district linemen. The team on everyone's radar is Frisco Emerson. The Mavericks finished second last year and return a lot, including Allen transfer Michael Hawkins at quarterback. Running back Izzy Bills and receivers Kylan Evans and Matthias Machado are all district players returning that should help put points on the board. Lake Dallas made the postseason in the last game of the year, and they bring back quarterback Cade Bortnam and receiver Keande Henry. Frisco Independence was a playoff team last year as well, but it was a senior-laden team, and the Knights will need some inexperienced players to step up in order to make another postseason push. Denton will need someone to step into the running back position now that district MVP Coco Brown has moved on. Frisco Memorial and Carrollton Creekview will try to build off their two combined wins last year as they look to make noise in district play. Switch to Cricket and get a free Moto G 5G with your new plan. Smile, you're on Cricket. For an even deeper look at 35A Division 2, here's producer Ward Fasold and insider Matt Diggs with the District Breakdown. All right, ladies, it's District Breakdown time. There's my good buddy Dixie over there. We're ready to start diving into some 5A districts, starting with 35A Division 2, where Argyle did not shock many people when they came in from 4A to 5A and did what they had to do. They didn't lose until they hit that defending champion South Oak Cliff team late in the playoffs. But... It seems like they got hit with the graduation bug. How do you how do you feel uh, they're going to do this year in three five A Division two, especially with Emerson coming up? You know they really did get hit with the graduation bug, and I know when you look at a lot of these legacy programs like uh, like South Lake Carroll and Highland Park, obviously they have to graduate every single year. Uh, but you know there's always a couple of players that I look at when I when I dig deep that you know like oh the sophomores coming up or you know uh, you know maybe they had a junior backup who got some time in some of the blowout games for the first time for a while for Argyle I don't really see that this year I don't really see that infrastructure that talent player uh, that I can just look at and go you know what they're going to be in good hands what makes me feel like they're in good hands is the coaching staff. Obviously, the legacy coaching staff uh, and the infrastructure that they've built over there, I think that they've earned the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but there's going to have to be some players coming up who really step up. I think what Argyle does best, and, and you're going to see that carry over from the last couple of years, is that offensive and defensive line. So I think a lot of people are going to be raising the flag of Frisco Emerson. Uh, obviously, the big story in the offseason was Mike Hawkins, the uh, all-star quarterback from Allen, transferring over. And uh, one of the, uh, according to the Dallas Morning News, one of the teams that voted against his transfer was Argyle. So I think you already see a little bit of bad blood uh, floating in with Argyle and Frisco Emerson. Uh, but Frisco Emerson, as you talked about, uh, obviously returned just about everybody. I got Argyle one, Frisco Emerson two, Lake Dallas three, Frisco Independence four, Frisco Memorial five, Denton six, and Carrollton Creek feud that round out the district at seven. All right, buddy. We'll post the entire breakdown segment this Wednesday on our social media pages. Now let's take a look at some game changers in our Players on the Rise presented by Parker University. The biggest splash in this district by far is the arrival of quarterback Michael Hawkins to Frisco Emerson. The four-star Allen transfer put up solid numbers as a starter in both his sophomore and junior years as he totaled almost 5,000 passing yards during those seasons. Hawkins is also a dual threat, so he can get you with his legs as well. He has offers from Oklahoma, TCU, and Alabama, among others. At Lake Dallas, Keande Henry is a sneaky good receiver for the Falcons. He teamed up with first-team All-District quarterback Cade Bortnam to create a dangerous pass attack that should become more deadly now that they are both seniors. Last year, Keande caught 30 passes for 626 yards and 10 touchdowns. Those numbers should go up in 2023. Argyle may have lost a lot of skilled position players to graduation, but they bring back tight end Hunter McFall. 
Hunter was a unanimous first-team All-District selection last year for his ability to open up holes for the Eagle running game. McFall is also a big target in the red zone as he caught 15 passes and four of them were for scores. Look for Hunter to do more damage as a senior. If Michael Hawkins isn't dominating through the air for Emerson, Izzy Bills will be running wild on the ground. Bills ran for over 1,100 yards as a junior for the Mavericks and earned the team's MVP award for 2022. With his vision and speed, Izzy is also a problem out of the backfield in the passing game. Switch to Cricket and get four lines for $25 each per month, plus unlimited nationwide 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Our Ward Fasol caught up with Frisco Independence head coach Nick Stokes to talk about the Knights in our Media Day segment. All right, this is Media Day, and we are talking 3-5A Division Two with Frisco Independence head coach Nick Stokes. Coach, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about last year first because that was a new district after realignment. You had some teams weren't even in districts before, like Emerson. Then you had teams jumping up from 4A. A lot of new teams that you were facing, and nobody really knew what to expect. And that was a really solid district. It was it was top heavy, yes, but it was a very solid district. Talk about just going through surveying a new district and new teams you were facing last year. Yeah, you know when when those districts come out every year, it's always or every other year, it's always uh, exciting to kind of see the new faces and and what you're going to get. And uh, and you're right, it was a it was a new district um, with with lots of teams that we haven't played before. Uh, and it shaped up to be really good competition. Um, you know, Ar Argyle moving up, um, people didn't know what to expect other than that they were going to be good. And uh, that, that came to be true. You know, you've got a new school opening up across town. Nobody knows what to expect out of them. And, and, and they turned out to be pretty dang good, too. Uh, so it was a great district for us. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Does that give you a little taste of what to expect for this year? You know, you, you've gone through it. You were undefeated there for a while sure. until the last couple of games, but you know sure. that you know what you're going to get out of Argyle now. You know Emerson. You know yeah. they took their uh, they took their transfer in, and they got a new quarterback and a lot of a lot of players that are were younger are now still there. So you know what you got to battle through. Sure. Is that helping your yeah. off season preparation for uh, this coming year? Well, you know it's it's every team is different. Every year is different, and. It's about getting these kids to buy in and believe in, in what we're doing. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We, we, uh, we know what to expect now. We know who the front runners are going to be in the district. Uh, I think that's pretty clear. And it's going to be about, um, you know, stepping up and meeting those challenges each week. Well, I appreciate you joining us with, joining with us, Coach, and, and good luck the rest of the way, or when it starts in four months. So yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You can catch the entire interview Friday on our social media channels. That's going to do it for this week's Campfire. Next week, we dive into District 4, 5A, Division 2. Until then, have a great week, everybody.